Back in February of 2020, I bought this Prime X470 Pro motherboard for my very first PC build and with it a Ryzen 2700X. And then of course about nine months later AMD launched the Ryzen 5000 series and I really wanted to get my hands on a 5900X. Now with the 5900X with the MSRP at $550, I would have been forced to get another motherboard, an X570 or a B550 for at least a couple hundred dollars. So $750 plus tax, it just didn't seem feasible to upgrade at that time. However, fast forwarding to today, 5900X is now way below retail, $399. I decided to pull the trigger, but I wanted to save some money I did not want to buy a B550 or an X570 motherboard. I wanted to keep my existing Asus Prime X470 Pro. And in order to do that, I had to update the BIOS on this motherboard. And you can see right here, at the time of updating the BIOS, I was currently using version 5601 for my Ryzen 2700X. Now, I didn't flash the BIOS. I went directly into the BIOS to search for the BIOS update, which brought me to 5809, version 5809. So this is very specific, going from 5601 to 5809. And no matter how much research you do, there's always a risk, a worst case scenario of breaking your motherboard. So do your research, be diligent about it. But for me, I finally just said the heck with it, and I did the update. Now, worst case scenario for me is that after the update, my 2700X would not boot, and then I'd be forced to go to my local Best Buy and get that 5900X, which I knew they had in stock. But lo and behold, after I updated the BIOS to 5809, my 2700X worked flawlessly with it. So I was able to update from 5601 to 5809 and still have my Ryzen 2700X working. And with that, I was super happy with that. So now it's time to get the 5900X. As you may or may not know, the 5900X does not come with an included cooler. So you have to ask yourself, do I want to get an AIO or use air cooling? I heard it gets pretty hot, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this Wraith Spire cooler from an earlier build that I had. Yeah, I was just kidding about the Wraith Spire cooler. Actually, I'm using Noctua's NHD15 Premium Cooler. You can see it got three 140 millimeter fans. I am more than confident that it's going to keep my 5900X cool. But first, we got to get the 2700X out. So, be back in a sec. And just a side note, it's been about 18 months since I'd last installed the 2700X into a, this uh, Corsair 4000D. And the thermal paste is still good. It's still nice and kind of gooey. And my temperatures reflected that over the past 18 months. So just FYI, Noctua's thermal paste, still good to go. All right, the 5900X is installed to my X470 Pro motherboard. Let's get the Noctua heatsink back on and see if she boots. All right, the 5900X is installed. Moment of truth. Let's see if it posts. Let's see, my CPU fans are not spinning yet. There they go. Okay. All the fans appear to be spinning. Let's see. Well, those two up there are not spinning. There they go. It's trying to. Uh, uh oh, I get lighting over here. All right. Asus and Search of Incredible. And there it is. Asus X470 Pro. It's reading the Ryzen 950 900X. X 12 core processor speed 3700 megahertz and it looks like it's reading everything else I'm going to go ahead and set this up and let's see what we have and for the next few hours I was tinkering with the, the frequency I got it to 4.5 gigahertz I'm about 1.26 volts and the Noctua cooler, the NHD15, is doing just fine. The temps are great. If you're in the same situation that I was using an X470, or maybe you have a B450, or even an older AM4 motherboard, leave some comments down below if you've been hesitant about updating your BIOS, or if you have done it and you have the same results as me, let me know, or 
let me know if you even bricked your motherboard. If this video helped you at all in any way, please make sure to drop a like on it. And as always, I'm going to see you in the next video, folks. Peace.